Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today with an archaic DN5B. Man, I swear, every time I launch this thing, I swear it's going to be the last flight of this model of DN5 with the uh, mixed engine boosters. Uh, and apparently they just keep cropping back up. I should probably look into that. Anyway, this is our uh, Jovian Moon Surface Explorer mission. Uh, it is one of two flights going out this window to Jupiter. Uh, one of them, hopefully, will land on Callisto to satisfy a contract, and the other one, should it not fail, uh, will land on any other moon of Jupiter. Just uh, depending on where luck takes us today, I guess, is what's going to happen. Anyway, our relative inclination with the moon is as low as it's going to get, so we might as well get this show on the road. Throttle set to full. SAS is on. Ignition. Oh, we have an engine failure. Alright, shutting down. Oh, that's interesting. One of our engines failed. Which one? Oh, one of our uh, E1As actually failed on the pad. Well, I'm... Super glad that uh, we have a backup, because that really sucks. All right, well, uh, I guess we'll get this one rolled back in and um, disassemble the rocket and set the parts on fire, because we never want to fly this model of DN5 ever again. And we'll go ahead and get our backup ready. It is already uh, rolled out to our other launch pad. Uh, I think this is on pad 42H, which is on loan to us from the Research and Development Center. Recover vessel. Uh, and the other one is at uh, pad 38, which is our long-standing in-use pad. Well, we got our full 182 grand back from that. Fantastic. Uh, all right, so first thing we're going to do, bring up our VAB. This is our backup flight. We're going to duplicate it. And uh, should this flight fail, we're going to edit it. Actually, we're probably going to edit it anyway, but we want to get this one on the road just because we can. Oh, I should have checked the build time on that. That would have been smart. All right. What the? Oh, no. How did this become a thing? Oh, good. <laughs> This happened during a live stream. I was experimenting with uh, these engines, the RS-68 series, to see if we could make them a viable replacement for the very expensive RS-25s. And the good news is, is it did not work very well. Um, the bad news is, is I don't know how this made it into production. This is going to be rather interesting, I think. Uh, especially considering it didn't work, we just duplicated the design, but we have to go back to edit the boosters anyway, although it looks like these are an appropriate type booster using, uh, yeah, 170 series. I hope they're the 172s. Um, but, well, we don't have much of a choice. I'm hoping that also means that I upgraded this engine here. Can we click on it, maybe? No. There we go. Okay, good. It does have five ignitions, so we do have the option if we have to light it to round out orbit. But um, here we are. Let's check our staging. Our relative inclination with the moon should still be almost on point, considering no actual time has passed. Set as target. Yeah, dot three nine. We're just going to go ahead and go. Uh, we are about seven days ahead of our actual launch window. So this should be rather interesting. Bottle <laughs> set to full. SAS is on. Ignition sequence. Looks like a solid light across the board. Clamps off. Uh, 1.31 off the launch pad, which makes this the uh, fastest DN series to leave the launch pad of all the DN series ever flown. That's worth something because uh, it will not achieve orbit on the core stage, unlike uh, every other DN series uh, ever flown. The good news is, is hopefully we can use this uh, extra special TWR to our advantage and start this gravity turn a little sooner and a little more aggressively. 
considering we will be uh, higher on our thrust to weight ratio for the entire flight profile. Uh, which, again, I hope I can use this to our favor. So I'm actually going to try to like concentrate on stuff and maybe try to fly a decent ascent path for the first time in about a thousand years. And we'll uh, see how well this goes for us. I'll uh, see all of you someplace closer to orbit. As I mentioned before, this uh, was kind of a prototype of me just messing around, seeing uh, what we could accomplish with a new engine, and uh, the honest result was that the RS-25s were just flat out better, so uh, this whole idea was kind of scrubbed and set to the side, how it ended up on a production run. Um, I guess the only real answer is, is I picked something that uh, I already knew the performance of. That would be this vehicle, since I was aware of its capabilities uh, before the change, and then decided to see uh, how this would measure up. Um, other than being not quite aggressive enough on our gravity turn, there are the boosters, they're down and away, and we do have a sub-1 TWR, which is um, the other shortcoming of this vehicle uh, versus, the, uh, versus the RS-25 powered you can't really call it a predecessor because I had never intended on this to go into service. Uh, activating our comms dish because um, I learned from that mistake once before. And then um, pushing ourselves onto orbit, just maintaining a couple of degrees above horizon. And uh, hoping that our time to uh, apogee uh, doesn't run out before uh, we can start really picking up some serious speed and uh, getting some legs under this thing. Uh, we will burn out the core stage before hitting orbit, which was kind of the yardstick I was using to measure it against the uh, RS-25 variant, which uh, the core stage would flame out, and uh, a lot of times we'd actually have uh, some excess delta-v in that core stage when we'd just go for a manual shutdown uh, main engine cutoff. Uh, before turning the entirety of uh, the ejection burn over to the B upper stage. Uh, this will not do that. The lower ISP, even though the higher thrust of these engines versus the RS-25s means that it just does not have the uh, long-windedness to make it all the way to orbit. So there is Miko and core stage separation and successful ignition on the HG3 for the B upper stage. And uh, it will do this uh, last kilometer per second or so as we uh, round out into a solid parking orbit before we can uh, plot our intercept uh, to Jupiter. A uh, little bit of angle down, that's pretty a standard affair. But uh, anyway, uh, here's old me to round this out. All right, and there's engine shutdown. We are at uh, 296 by 260 kilometer. Uh, not bad, really. And uh, 6,900 meters per second left in our uh, HG3B upper stage. Also, uh, not terrible, considering this was the wrong rocket for this mission. And I really have no clue how that made its way into production. Somebody is going to have some questions to answer. All right, um, what am I looking for? Maneuver planner. Transfer to another planet. We need to select Jupiter as our target. As soon as KSP catches up with me anyway. That's Mars. That's Jupiter. Set as target. Uh, lowest DV is in two days. How about ASAP? Any time now. 6.5 versus 6.57 6 versus 6.562. Uh, I think we can afford that. Transit duration, two years. Let's uh, focus our view here. Not that this is really going to matter. But yeah, that brings us along the uh, correct side of the planet uh, for our orbital path things. Yeah, there's yeah, that's Ganymede. That would be Callisto. That is our target. So really, we can... I don't know. I think we're going to take the benefit of coming in low to capture... And then uh, slowly, we'll probably use uh, many flybys of Io or Europa to drop our orbit down to where we can better intercept Callisto on gravity assist. Because that's the only way we're going to have fuel to do this. And uh, interestingly enough, we should have more than enough Delta V to make this transfer. And then the inevitable correction when I screw it all up. Uh, all right, so uh, that note is in 42 minutes most of a lap, half a lap, I should say. 
So uh, that is the plan. This actually is going swimmingly, all things considered. Uh, we will still go back and edit our backup rocket, but... Um, <sighs> I really don't know if uh, changing out those... Uh, I keep wanting to call them the 180, the 68s uh, for the RS-25s. And we'll probably just leave the boosters alone and let it have the best TWR off the pad of uh, any DN series ever, even to surpass this one, I suppose. So uh, we'll see how long that'll take. If we can get it off the ground in less than a week, then uh, we'll give all of our, I don't know, VHP assembly staff uh, huge bonuses, a nice raise, and a couple of weeks vacation. And uh, we'll get that flight underway also. So we're just going to get uh, aimed in here to this node. Or should I actually reconsider the viability of uh, this variant of the DN5 as uh, a viable platform after all? All things considered. I mean, this is not the heaviest cargo this thing can lift. Uh, certainly nowhere near the lightest I think we've put on it either. But it did uh, do its job even if not as well as the older variant. All right, four minutes out from our node, 414. Actually, we're gonna start to ologen this HG3. Uh, hopefully it won't take too drastically long for ignitions remaining. We should really only need maybe two of them. Unstable, risky. Come on, you can do it. Very stable ignition. And let's hold, have flight computer hold the maneuver node. Get rid of our pork chop planner. And uh, there's not much of a view to enjoy. Uh, so I guess since this is actually going pretty well, we can go ahead and try to christen this with a name. Um, as per usual, if you have a name suggestion for a uh, mission destined to land on the surface of Callisto, please do leave it in the comments for me below. Uh, most likes wins, uh, as usual, so I guess we'll uh, announce that winner probably the next time we check back in with this, which will be years and years and years from now. But don't let that uh, stop you, and uh, don't hold back. So I guess we'll just speed through the rest of this. Anyway, name suggestions, comments below. Thank you. Because even despite the bad track record that this uh, vehicle has established, uh, it's had one successful landing on Ganymede, and then uh, two somewhat suspect transfers to Saturn. This would be the third launch of an identical vehicle, and uh, it's actually going swimmingly, despite it uh, starting off on the wrong vehicle, which is interesting enough all on its own. But hopefully, uh, this will make a successful ejection to uh, Jupiter and can carry on to carry on a successful landing on Callisto but we're rounding out some of this burn now so uh, I'm going to turn you over to old me oh well that's less than ideal but uh, not bad really uh, just a little off axis but we'll go ahead and, and plot that correction now and maneuver still 317 meters per second left in this tank I doubt we'll need near that much to correct for this this far out. Come on. Come on, KSP. Let's go. Don't. Focus. Thank you. Node. Well, oh, I was wrong. Yeah, what I surely thought was going to be a uh, one or two hundred meter per second uh, tiny correction uh, turns out to be um, somewhere close to a kilometer per second uh, massive correction. And it's just, uh, well, do we trade our relative inclination for a uh, much higher periapsis at Jupiter, which will... Uh, cost us a whole lot more on our orbital capture burn uh, in the range of like four or five hundred meters per second difference uh, or do we 
try to take that on our plane change maneuver. So uh, there was a whole lot of tugging at nodes, and uh, honestly, I had intended on inserting some footage of me uh, retrofitting the uh, backup of the backup, really, the copy of this rocket that we made in the beginning of the episode. I was going to edit, replace the RS-25s back on, um, adjust some of the fuel mixture, and then uh, get it bump to the top of the production line because uh, we should be able to crank one out really quick with all the spare DN6, DN5 parts that we have just kind of sitting around. Um, it would have been just a couple of weeks to uh, crank that rocket out, which uh, seems a little weird, but uh, we actually decided to scrub the mission. Not that we're going to get into any spoilers here, but uh, this flight and this... Uh, maneuver actually went uh, relatively well, although the game did crash right about here. We'll just uh, cut right through it as I had to come back and entirely replot all of that nodage because uh, all the nodes got messed up. So here I am basically starting from scratch after I thought I had what was a uh, pretty good maneuver lined up. Uh, it was just uh, not to be. So there we have a rather high uh, periapsis at Jupiter, but a low relative inclination and a solid line on the periapsis versus the ascending or descending node, which uh, put, should put us in a very good spot to uh, gravity assist into a lower orbit. And uh, we're just going to burn off a bunch of our thruster fuel since we're way ahead of the node before we uh, light the HG3, burn off what little bit of it has left in it, and then uh, carry out the rest of this burn on our AJ-10 uh, 118K, and uh, conducting a lot of that burn from the map view, but we were still pretty early, so we shut down the engine, and then uh, restarted it a few minutes later to try to get ourselves as in line as we could. Uh, still just a couple of degrees off, but uh, we'll correct for some of that on thruster power to try to get it uh, as evened out as we can before we plot our next node. We'll set our alarm. There it is. So a mission successfully on its way. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.